Hi guys, this is Fernando Aguirre bringing you Hyperinflation for Kids. Well, not really, I'm not gonna be explaining hyperinflation to kids, but this is indeed my 8 years old th third grade ma uh, mathematic manual, and this is some paper money, uh, keyword being paper, that we're gonna be using for some explanations in a while. Now, this is his math manual, as I said before, and it's pretty ordinary. Now, I was surprised when looking around a bit and I found this. I was just checking to see what he w he's doing in school and such and I saw this page with some uh, of the money we use here. This is our peso. You have two two peso bills, five, ten. I suppose sa same thing in, in US with kids in school. They use small pieces of, of dollars and, and pretend that's that's actually money and you use it for for math exercises and such we have the one peso coin which is very popular it's one of the most used ones because the little ones 20 cents aren't the, the 50 cents 10 cents 5 cents 1 cent those are almost of no use now you, you need them for buses and such but you don't get much in Argentina with with just cents anymore I've noticed that in USA the one dollar coin is becoming very popular as well and it's being used a lot. Well, I suppose this is similar, but when I turned the page I found this. And these are also 10 pesos, 1 pesos, this is just paper, but again, keyword being paper, this is our old money, this is our old peso from back before we had democracy it's all put together as if it's the same thing and and at that moment I, I thought well well isn't it it's yeah it is it certainly is and as you keep turning you have this these old 100 peso bills and now you have the 1000 peso bills and that reminded me of the time before uh, democracy back before uh, Alfonsin was elected into office in 1983. We were having 700 percent inflation. We we were already using these 1,000 pesos were uh, of much use. You had 50,000 pesos, 100,000 pesos, 500,000 pesos. That was until Alfonsin was elected in 1983, and he came up with a plan austral he came up with a new currency for us just knocked a few zeros because that's pretty convenient and he came up with this with the austral instead of the peso now the austral is nice uh, just having one <laughs> one instead of fifty hundred thousand we were coming too close to the crazy one hundred trillion dollars used in Zimbabwe that is like three bucks so it was nice to go back to one, one austral. Uh, things didn't work as well as we expected because if you do that with, with paper currency without real economy backing up, it just goes up again. So even though we have the, the plan austral by 1985, which was uh, Alfonsin's idea, soon it went back up. He first traded the the one peso bill the 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 one thousand peso bill i'm sorry the one thousand peso bills was worth one austral so he basically raised three zeros and instead of having uh, one thousand pesos you now used one very convenient one austral so with the one austral we quickly went uh, again to 80% inflation by the end of that year, by 1986, we had 80% inflation. So, whoa, here we go again. 1,000 australes. I remember using this in school to buy candy because you couldn't get much more than that. And this was pretty common. I had several of these in, in my wallet and, <laughs> you know, just buying a, some, some candy bars or a couple of these bought you a sandwich. This was what I used in school for some time. And of course, uh, things kept getting worse so you soon needed the a hundred thousand australes bill so with inflation going steady up by twenty percent a month something like that we soon had uh, people only wanting to accept in dollars instead of, of australes of course who wanted a, a currency that was losing value so fast i mean this started in the plan austral it started in nineteen eighty five by nineteen eighty nine uh, Alfonsin had to resign 
Menem had been elected, but he couldn't uh, wait anymore. He had to resign just after the election. So, well, that's what happens when you have 20% inflation per, per month. So we soon had the 500,000 Australis bill. And that's when Menem said, okay, this is enough. We're not, <laughs> we're, we're, this is getting ridiculous again. So we'll start all over again. Menem elected, he said, yeah, the 90s, by 91, 92, we started with the pesos again. And that's what we're using today. This is my wallet. So from the, the, uh, the 90s, We started with, with the new pesos, the ones you, you saw before. That's two pesos, ten pesos, the ones you saw in, in my, my son's school book. Now the thing is this, you need, this is my wallet, this is usually what I have with me. And the thing is this, you really need lots of pesos because inflation is already killing us. So you need to have a good amount of these pesos if you expect to buy anything. Here in Argentina we use lots of, of uh, paper money because we really don't trust banks anymore much after what happened in 2001. So people really prefer uh, cash. In many cases, cash, cash is the only uh, thing accepted. If you're buying gasoline, for example, in most places they won't accept credit cards they just want cash so with inflation going up as it is now I think we really don't have any serious statistics anymore because this government prefers not to take a look at them because they they make you sad so why take a look at, at inflation in a country let's just pretend it's not going on uh, people are already demanding a uh, 500 uh, peso bills because this is very inconvenient to go around with lots of money, with, with lots of, of, of paper actually, and it's not really money. So with lots of paper in your wallet makes it really fat and makes things more complicated. So they started asking, hey, why don't we start making 500, uh, 500 uh, peso bills again? And our wise, very wise president decided that it's not really a good idea because people, when that happens, tend to think that the paper money isn't really money so you really don't want that do you so that's it guys that's uh, the small story of how we went from pesos to australis to pesos back again and who knows what's next of course in in 2001 uh, the peso which was artificially packed to the dollar to one peso one austral this was menem's idea in the 90s, we had one peso was one Australia, but you soon realize that if you went to USA and you said, hey, give me a hundred dollars and you gave this to an American, he wouldn't give you a hundred dollars. He would just look at you as if you're, you're nuts with, with enough reason to do so. Now, the, um, the peso after the economy collapsed in 2001, all of a sudden it wasn't one dollar, one peso anymore, it was just one dollar, four pesos, so you basically lose 25% of the purchasing value. Inflation keeps keeps going up and we are needing to add more zeros to this. Now as we do that it's uh, not even real anymore that four pesos is, is one dollar. It's it really should be like six, seven, ten pesos, one dollar. That wouldn't be more realistic. But our wise president again is probably trying to postpone this until this year's election when when she will be reelected. And I agree with her. That's a good idea. So after re-election, we'll probably see uh, things changing again. But well, that's it, guys. For now, I just wanted to show you how in in my 32 years, I, I'm not really that old. Just 32 years, I saw several different currencies and lots of zeros uh, being added and raised. And well, that's basically it, guys. Just wanted to show you this. Hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to subscribe and see you on our next video. Take care.